So welcome back to my channel, the Smoking Beer channel. Today we're going to be doing some uh, chicken fajita or boneless chicken and some sausage on the barbecue pit. All right. So uh, first thing you got to do is you want to get your, your briquettes nice and hot. You want to turn them on, use charcoal starter, use that uh, little handle deal that you can buy from Academy or Walmart or wherever that you don't have to use it. But the whole point is get it hot enough to where you can actually get the grill nice and, and, and hot. Now what I like to do whenever I do something like this is um, get my briquettes going and then at the same time I also like to add in a couple of wood chunks that you can also buy like at Walmart or you can buy at HEB or any of your local stores. Uh, these chunks will give you that smoke that you're seeing right now. It gives you a lot of that smoke that's coming out. Um, I don't know if you can see but the, the flames are a little bit uh, on the higher end right now. So that tends to happen whenever you start off a, um, a, a fire like this you're gonna have some hot spots and then you're gonna have some cold spots so I'm gonna show you what you what you should do during this time um, what I did is I ended up buying a small little shovel and what this shovel allows me to do is it allows me to move the the briquette or the wood or whatever I'm using uh, inside the, the pit so that I can evenly distribute the um, the fire that it has or the heat so that's what I'm gonna do right now So this is a shovel that I'm talking to. It's a small little shovel that, uh, that you can purchase uh, pretty much anywhere, Amazon, anywhere. You can just get it. Um, what you want to do is you want to get in here and you want to move your, bri your briquettes or whatever you're using for, for heat, for fire. You want to move them around so that it evenly distributes, distributes your, your heat source because you don't want uh, a lot of hot spots in the same areas because then you'll have uneven cooked meat. So you see how that fire kind of died down, but it didn't necessarily, the heat didn't go away, it was just the uh, fire that was too close or too cluttered together, it started to evenly distribute. So the next thing you want to do is once you have your, your grill nice and warm, you do want to get rid of any of uh, the old uh, remnants of whatever you had cooked here before. So I recommend you buy some spiral looking um, brush instead of those wire brushes or those bristles because they do it tend to come off. I like using this one. All you have to do is you kind of like rub your grill on top. But if you want to give that extra little uh, flavor to your to your meat, I recommend you get a, a piece of onion, a sliced onion like like so. And with this one, this is also really good to clean the, the grill. So notice how white it is. I'm just going to go over it. Now if your grill gets to be too hot, what you can do is you can use some tongs or you can uh, stab it with a knife and you can do it that way. But right now, it is hot, but it's not hot enough to where I'll be getting burned. So this is a, a Texas staple right here. You can clean it, and as you're cleaning it, you're pretty much telling your whole neighborhood, hey, I'm cooking out here. Watch out. So you're going to notice notice how dark that, get, they got, that got because it is cleaning some of that gunk off of your, off of your grill. Now another thing that this does also allow you to do is it gives you a nice little smell, that, that little, little aroma to your food. Now once, I, once I'm nice and clean, I don't want to throw this away, I want to give it a little bit of a flavor or a taste to it, so I just leave it somewhere on the grill where it's not going to be in the way. Now I notice that my fire is getting rowdy again, so what I'm going to do again is I'm going to move the, the coals around so that the the fire uh, distributes evenly. Notice how your uh, your flames went down, but again, your heat is still here. Once you're ready for to put the meat on the on the grill, I chose boneless uh, chicken because it comes out faster. Uh, it doesn't take as long as the ones with a bone in. These are chicken thighs. Uh, we call them chicken fajita here. But if you go to your your meat market or you go to Walmart or something, it'll be 
uh, boneless and uh, semi skinless chicken thighs. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay them on the grill as flat as possible. Now it depends on how hot your grill is. If your grill is super hot, what's going to end up happening here is uh, you might get some uh, flame ups, which, which means that you're going to get fire coming at you. If that happens, be careful because you can get burned. But right now, it's my fire's pretty tame for now. Before the fat starts to hit the the the, bri the briquettes, um, it won't flame up just yet. So I'm going to try to do this as fast as possible so that I don't get that going uh, in my face. So believe it or not, that's about five pounds of uh, boneless, skinless uh, chicken thighs and chicken leg quarters. Okay, so as you see, we have our chicken, uh, chicken fajita already on the grill. It's already starting to cook. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to put in some of this sausage. Now, there are two types of sausages, that, uh, primary two types of sausages that you can get. There's one that looks like a horseshoe, which is fine. I used to buy that all the time. But then I realized that these type of sausages are the exact same brand, except they're kind of like in a hot dog style. And this is really good because you don't have to worry too much about uh, cutting too much sausage. As soon as you pull these out, these are like individual. So hey, you know what? You want some chicken and here's a, a sausage. You don't have to worry about cutting it. Uh, if you're serving to kids, you can just half these and then you can have give half to the kids. But this is a, just an easy way, an easy and convenient way of serving sausage without having to cut too much. Now these, they don't necessarily have to cook, but they do have to warm up. So I would put them away from the fire, wherever the heat source is the most, I would put them away from that area. That way they don't necessarily cook, but they do warm up and have a, a nice grill texture to it. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to add them to my grill in my uh, area where it is not as hot as the other, as the other part of the grill. Now what I'm noticing is that there's a lot of wind coming in from the bottom where, where I have my, my airflow going. So what I'm going to do at this time is I'm actually going to close it so that not a lot, a lot of wind comes in and that way it doesn't um, agitate the fire as much. Again because these chicken, this chicken is uh, it's not doesn't have any bone in it and it's fresh which is another benefit it's not frozen it is going to come out fairly fast so you have to keep an eye on it um, it's okay to have a little bit of that fire going on the bottom just keep an eye on it because once it starts uh, a lot of it has to do with the fat that the chicken is releasing and that can give you some a uh, little bit of a grease flare up now the method that I use for these uh, sausages is every once in a while just roll them over a little bit so they can get those grill marks on them and uh, try to evenly distribute the heat around the, the sausage so it looks aesthetically pleasing. I mean, it, it's gonna taste good because it's coming off of the grill, but it, you don't want just one, one side being totally burnt or totally done and the other side kinda like looking like it's not uh, even cooked at all. So just keep an eye on that. Uh, typically what I'll do is I'll put a couple here and I'll move them around. I'll give them a half turn. I'll give this one a half turn, this one a half turn. And I'll keep on doing that uh, periodically so that they don't get uh, too too toasty. Because if you notice, I, I left that one there a little bit, and you're starting to see a little bit of the uh, the grill marks there. Don't leave them there too long. They are very sensitive. The skin is very sensitive on these on this sausage, especially if you have it in an area where there's a lot of heat. So you do have to kind of keep it keep a, a little bit of a closer eye on this. Sizzling is always good in a barbecue. Uh, when you're making a barbecue sizzling means there's uh, enough heat or sufficient heat but it also means you have to keep an eye on it a little bit closer you just can't walk away and go get a beer or go get something to drink because it might just flare up on you so just keep an eye on it and uh, you should be good now usually what you want to do is you don't want to really disturb these too much when you first lay them down you kind of want to leave them there uh, as long as possible at bed at most you want to flip them over twice uh, once that's that's not considered once that's laying them down on the grill but 
Uh, once you turn them over, that's once, and then no more than one more time turning them over again, which means uh, you're going to leave them there for a, a quite a bit of time before you flip them over. All right, so all I'm doing here is I'm just flipping them over, making sure that my, my sausage here is is evenly being uh, uh, heated up. And what I'm noticing is that up here on this part of the grill, there's a lot of uh, fire coming out of one of the wood chunks that I added. So I am going to bring the sausage down a little bit lower here where I know that there's not that much heat. That way they don't uh, burn before I'm able to get them out. So you're always having, having to keep an eye on this so that they don't flare up. Especially your sausage. Your sausage releases a lot of fat, which means that if uh, you're not careful and you walk away, you can come back to a grill that's completely uh, on fire because of all the, all the grease that is being released. So right now I think I'm okay. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna let it cook for a little bit, give it a couple of minutes. I'm only gonna open it just to check up on the sausage and flip it over. Remember the chicken, we wanna try to leave it there as much as possible before flipping it the first time. So at this time it is it is time to flip over the, the chicken for the first time. What I have been doing off camera is I have been turning them uh, a little bit, my the sausages. This is what I was talking to you guys about. Notice how here it looks like it's uh, very well done. On the other side it still looks like it's, it's still coming out of the package. So you want to try to avoid that as much as possible and the way you do that is you continue to turn them. Alright, so just keep on turning them. It's getting a good color, you just don't want to give it too much color because then it starts to look burnt. Here's another prime example. I left it too long, so the difference in the in the coloration is very, very uh, evident. So I just want to make sure, not that there's anything wrong with that, just don't leave them there too long because then you will have uh, sausage that does look like it was overdone. One of the beauties about smoking outside, outdoors, is that that is what some people are, are looking for, that little bit of a charcoal burn, but they don't want it to be burnt. There's a difference between having grill marks and it actually being burnt. Now, the way you know that your chicken is ready to be turned is uh, it starts to change a little bit of a different color on the top. So uh, to this point, you can already tell that this chicken is already being cooked from the bottom. When I flip them over, you should have a nice grill mark to the bottom part because I've only flipped them over once. There you go. If you look at this, that's your grill mark that you're looking at. And that's because I left them there uh, this is the first time I flip them. I, w I haven't been flipping them left and right, how some people uh, suggest you do. This is one to two flips at the most, and uh, your chicken comes out nice and tender. Look at that. I'm just going to flip these once. And one of the other reasons that you, you want to wait to flip them, you don't want to flip them too early, is because uh, if you just initially put the chicken down and after about a minute you decide to flip it, uh, the, what's going to end up probably going to happen to you is that, that some of the chicken is going to get stuck to your grill. Now, I'm not saying that these are coming off cleanly, but they're coming off about 99% clean. Even that one that kind of stuck to the grill, everything is still on there. Nothing has really came off on the grill. So just another uh, thing to keep in mind, especially if um, if you're using if you're using a chicken that has no skin on it, there's really no uh, room for error. If you pull them out too early, what's going to happen is that you're going to have a lot of your chicken stay on your grill, and that's not what you want. You want the chicken on the plate and not on the grill. So that was my first turn here. Um, I am going to let it cook on that side for about five five to eight minutes, come back and check on it, and then once they're up to temp, we can go ahead and pull them out. Right, so at this point, I'm already ready to pull out the sausage because for me, I, I have a color that, I achieved the color that I really wanted on the sausage. Again, this is a matter of personal preference. Uh, if you like it a little bit toastier, leave them in there longer, but to me, I really don't want them to be too, too toasty. I want them to be nice and grill marked, but not necessarily uh, burnt. So at this time, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull my my sausage out so that it can uh, it can rest a little bit in the in my uh, food store. Wow. 
What I like to use is just a simple Tupperware type of thing where I can just put my meat in here so that uh, while the rest of the meat finishes cooking, this can stay in here nice and warm. Uh, ideally, if you have uh, the ability or you have the equipment, I would put this in a small ice chest lined with foil paper and that will actually keep it cool, uh, warmer longer. Now, the reason you would want to do something like that, I'm, I'm cooking right now for the family, just for my, for my immediate family, but if I'm going to have a party, I usually do get my cooler out, I do line it with foil paper, and as the meat is coming out, I'm putting the meat in there so it can stay nice and warm, even if it's uh, 30 minutes or an hour before it's time to serve. So my sausage is in here, it is, um, it is resting for now. The next thing I want to do is I want to check the internal temp of my uh, chicken. Now, for this type of chicken, because it's a, it's a dark meat, chicken breast, not chicken breast, it's a thighs and legs, um, recommends at least the internal cooking temp of 165 to 175. So what I like to do is I like to go in here before I pull any chicken out, and I like to check to see if it's already up to temp. Um, what you want to do is you want to identify the chicken that, that looks to be the thickest, the thickest part of the chicken and just insert the meat probe. Don't go all the way in, just kind of go in uh, half ways. And if you notice, my, my temperature is telling me that it's at 180. Okay, so that's uh, above the recommended 165 to 175. So to me, that chick, the temperature probe is telling me that that piece of chicken is done. But I don't just go with the first reading, I go to another one. This one is marking at slowly rising. So this one is still needs a little bit more time. So I'm going to leave that one there. Check this one. See this one needs more time. It's at 160. So that one still needs a little bit more cooking time. I'm going to check this one. You see, that's why it's very important to have, I mean, yes, you want to be able to say, why well, I can eyeball it, but in the long run, it is the health of people that you are uh, playing with, so I'd rather be safe than sorry. So this one's going up pretty quick. You can almost tell on that one, because it does look a little bit uh, more uh, well done on that one, but it still has a little bit more to go. So I'm just going to leave them there another five minutes, and then come back and check on the temperature of these again. Again, I haven't flipped them over, because a couple of flips and that's it. So right now I'm going to leave it there for my, about another five minutes and then we'll see what the temperature says at that point. One of the mistakes that a lot of people do is they think that all of their chicken needs to come out at the same time. What I've been doing is I've been checking the internal temp of these uh, of my chicken and some of them are done. At 192 it's pretty much well well done. So I'm going to pull this one out but if you notice there's others who are still uh, below the one the one, uh, 175, 165 to 175 is recommended. Like that piece of chicken is at 145. I'm not going to pull that one, but I can't leave this one in, in there too long because then this one is going to dry out. So easy thing to do is pull these out, and as you're pulling them out, go ahead and start slicing them so you can put them inside your, uh, your whatever you're going to you put your meat in there to rest. So there you go. You have some... Some, um, I guess, a dark meat chicken, but it looks, it looks very, very, uh, very, very juicy. Let's give this a taste test. Oh yeah, that was good. So it's always uh, recommended you have a, a cutting board next to you. So that as your chicken is, is coming out and it's done, you can cut it, and that way by the time you go inside, it's already ready to go. You don't have to tell everybody, okay, I know you're hungry, but let's wait a little bit because I still have to cut all the meat. So now I'm gonna check this one. It's a one eight over 180, so we're good, 189. And you just continue the process. Uh, some chicken, and actually what, the, what I do with this chicken is, I, if you guys recall, I only flipped it over once. This was the original side, and then I flipped it over once, and it has a nice little golden texture to it. All right. Cut it down the middle, and then just cut away. It's falling apart, look at that. So 
some of it is going away. But, uh, the little animals will be happy about that one. Alright, let me check my next piece. Uh, which one looks done? I think this one's done. I don't even have to check this one. This one's done. And if you're curious about what this other piece of meat is over here, uh, please subscribe. I have that's a part of another video that I'm that I'm uh, working on. But please subscribe, and uh, that way you can find out what that that uh, piece of meat is in that foil. So let me try this one again. See that one's still taking a little bit of time to rise to the temperature. It's at 151, but I don't like how long it's taking to get there, so that tells me leave it a little bit longer. Let me try this one. Notice how that one jumped up right away from 180 to 185. That tells me for sure this one is done. And you just continue the process until you're able to pull out all of your meat. This might take you five minutes, it might take you 10 or 15. Do not rush it. Remember, you're, um, you're cooking for other people, which means if it's not fully cooked, you might get them sick. So I'd rather take an extra five or 10 minutes than get somebody sick on my watch. So I'm gonna continue doing this and then we'll, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, once, once you have this done, you can go, go ahead and close your pit and uh, you can let the coals die down or if you're gonna put anything uh, extra on the grill, the, the fire is nice and warm so that should be able to be good. But thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe. Uh, leave any comments on the on the comment section and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can once again This was a smoking beard and thank you for watching fajitas and, and sausage uh, uh, Chicken fajitas and sausage cooked on a charcoal grill